Okay, so now that we know that we have uh, three conditions to satisfy regarding static equil equilibrium, right? We can't have motion in the y direction and we cannot have motion in the x direction. So in order to satisfy this, we need to write a couple of equations. And the equations are that the sum of the forces in the y direction must equal zero and also that the sum of the forces in the x direction must equal zero. Because remember, the sum of the forces, right, is equal to the net force. And the net force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? Now, that means that if this is zero, that means this must equal zero. That means that the acceleration must be zero and that satisfies the condition of no movement. Um, now, the other one is that we cannot have this thing rotating. So we can't have any type of a rotation. Now remember, in terms of uh, torques, okay, torque is equal to force times distance and in terms of an equation we write that f perpendicular times d where d uh, is the arm and so it would look you know something like this if this is the pivot point and you had a force going like this and um, the rotation or the torque that it would create about the pivot would be F times D because F and D are perpendicular. So we now have three equations one, two, and three for our um, equations to be satisfied for static equilibrium. So for every single question that we do, we're going to y y implement or we're going to apply these three equations. Now the one thing we need to remember here is that obviously for y, you know, up is positive and obviously for x to the right is positive. But for torque, which direction is positive? Is it counterclockwise or clockwise? And the answer is, remember uh, that when you turn a screwdriver, it travels in the direction of clockwise rotation. So just like we have, you know, X, Y, and Z, a positive torque is going to be coming out of the paper, or in this case, your screen. So that means that uh, coming out of the screen would mean a counterclockwise direction is positive. Because if you hold onto a screwdriver and turn it uh, you know, counterclockwise, it comes towards you. It doesn't move away from you. And coming towards you means coming out of the screen or your paper. So now we know all the directions and the positives and negatives. We can use this to solve a problem. So here is example 9-4 on page 210. Uh, we have here a uh, basically like a table, kind of like a table or you know a uh, structure. It has a support here on the left and a support on the right, and it's held up. So this, this middle piece, this horizontal piece here, is held up by these two supports on the left and the right. And these support forces are F1 on the left and F2 on the right. And the beam that goes across the horizontal beam, the center of gravity here, CG, uh, has a weight of little mg where little m is equal to 1500 kilograms for the beam 
and then sitting at this location here, and the distances, by the way, are 10, 5, and 5. So this is 10, and this is 5, and this is 5 meters. Now, that means that the big M, which is the large mach machinery that is sitting at this uh, location here, is actually uh, 15,000 kilograms. So what we need to figure out are what are the two forces that are holding up this beam that goes across at F1 and F2. So if we apply our, now in this case, right, there is nothing in the X, but there is in the Y. So let's write summation of the forces in the Y equals zero, and let's write them. So we know, right, that we're going to all by convention, take F1 as positive. So F1 minus little mg, that's the second one, minus big mg, and then plus F2. That's all got to equal zero. So now we finish this. Now we can't solve it yet because there's, this is only one equation and two unknown. We do know m and we do low little m and big M, but that's not enough to solve this equation. So what we have to do is we have to write another equation. We have to say the sum of the torques is equal to zero. Now, when you do the sum of the torques, and so essentially, you know, when I wrote this equation, this equation here is the equation uh, to define torque, but in fact, I kind of left it off here, but I should have writ written down the sum of the torques is also equal to zero, but that is about a point P. So, uh, by the way, if you're wondering what variable I'm using for this torque here, it's called tau, and um, that's tau, and tau is drawn by kind of doing a squiggly line like that and then you do that and so that's tau and that's that stands for torque so we need to decide upon which point the torque is calculated now this is important because you can either make create more work for yourself or you can make the problem be easier for you, become easier for you depending on the point that you choose as your point as your pivot point now remember something the pivot point choice is arbitrary in other words let's let's take a moment to discuss this okay so let's say we have a body doesn't matter what it is it could be a beam it could be an arbitrary sized body if it's rotating, you could say, all right, well, what if it's rotating about this point? Or what if it's rotating about this point? So the rotation is going to look different, right? Um, I, can't do, I can't really do animation in my drawing here, but it's obvious to see that if this beam was rotating about the center, right, it would look like, like a helicopter blade rotating, whereas, you know, uh, if it was rotating about this point here, it doesn't matter if it's rotating clockwise or counterclockwise, it's going to look very different. Same thing here. If this object was rotating about this point or this point or this point, what I'm trying to get across here is that if an object has no rotation about one point, then it has no rotation about any other point. So therefore, the point, and also, by the way, there's something else I have to uh, describe. The point of rotation doesn't have to be inside the object. I could pick a point outside the object. And once again, if the, if the rotation about this point is zero, in other words, if the sum of the torques Let's say this is point P. If this equation is true, then 
It's also true for all other points. Doesn't matter which point you pick. As long as one of the points, if the sum of the torques is equal to zero, then it's true for all points. Therefore, the point that you choose is arbitrary. You can choose any point. Now, now that we have that concept out of the way, your choice, as I said before, can make this problem easier or harder. So, and here's why. If we choose a point, let's say, let's, let's say, let's say we choose this point. Let's call this point where F1 is acting, um, let's call it uh, A, and let's call this point B. Then, if we go like this, if we say the sum of the torques about point A is equal to zero. Let us now write down the equation for the sum of the torques about point A. So what we need to do is we need to go to each and every force, and there's four of them here, right? One, two, three, four, and see what torque it produces about point A. So here we go. And I'll just write down for, you know, for memory's sake, I'll write down what torque is equal to. Torque is equal to F perpendicular times D. So, and D, by the way, is the distance from the force to the pivot point. In this case, we have chosen the pivot point A. Therefore, let us start with F1. We could say we could say F1 times now what's the distance between F1 and point A? Well, F1 is acting at point A, so therefore the distance is zero. Plus, remember, this is actually so here is the equation, right? So I've multiplied F times D, but this is summation. Right? So I have to add all of them, and there's four of them in this case. Okay? So now I've got the force of CG, which is MG. Um, but you've got to be careful here. And the thing you need to be careful about is, is this going to be a positive or a negative force? Or I should say, uh, no, let me state that again. Is it going to be a positive or a negative torque? Remember, counterclockwise is positive. However, this force, m, little mg, if you were to put a arm here and push down this way, this is going to cause this arm to rotate clockwise. Therefore, that is a negative torque. So we need to write that down. Therefore, I think this uh, positive symbol was wrong. So, I mean, I could replace it, right? I could just go plus negative uh, little mg times uh, the distance of 10. Personally, I don't like writing it this way. I would prefer to write this again, so let me fix it. So, I'll say minus now mg times uh, 10, okay? And now let's do the rest. So now we've also, this one here, the big mg, also is providing a clockwise rotation torque. So that's also going to be minus. Now this is big mg, and that's going to be times 15 right because 10 plus 5 and then finally F2 which is up now this is going to cause a rotation about point A that is going to be counterclockwise so that's going to be positive F2 times 20 and all this is going to be equal to 0 now, the reason why I said it makes a difference in terms of making the problem easier 
or more difficult, depending on where you choose your point of rotation, is that point A is a very nice point to choose because of this. Essentially, if we did not pick point A, let's say we picked um, the center of gravity, for example, then we would have the variables F1 and F2 in this equation. And so then we would have two, e here's, here's one equation with F1 and F2, and then we'd have another equation with F1 and F2, and so we'd have two, un two unknowns and two equations. But by choosing A as my point of rotation, what I have effectively done is I have deleted or omitted the F1 force. Why? Because the distance between F1 and point A is zero. And zero times anything is zero. Therefore, now my equation simply becomes, I can simply ignore that. And here is now my equation. And this now becomes very easy now to solve for F2. I can now solve for F2. And when I do that, and when I find F2, I can sub the answer, the substitute the answer, back into the, the first equation from the sum of the forces in the y direction and solve for F1. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So let's solve for F2 from this equation. So let's go. Uh, Let's take these two guys, these mg's, to the other side. So we'll have f2 is equal to little mg times 10 plus, these are both now positive, 15. And then I'm going to divide both sides. So notice here I'm multiplying by 20. So I'm going to divide both sides by, by 20, and that should give me f2. Now I can do one more simplification. And that is, I can factor out g from the top, which is the common term. And then I can plug in my values. So my values are, um, right? So let's factor out g here. So we'll go 9.8 times little m is uh, 1,500 times 10 plus big M is uh, 1,000, or sorry, 15,000, right, times 15, and all that divided by 20. So I'm going to plug that through my calculator. So here we're going to get 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons. It's actually, you know, 1.176. And so now, don't, don't round that. I've rounded it just to write it down, but don't round it. Store it in your calculator's memory, OK? 1.176 times 10 to the power of 5. And now we can take that value and go back up to this equation here, OK, and sub it in. So let me write that equation again, all right? Or maybe we can just pull it it over this way and we'll just copy this over again because our paper here is basically infinite and um, we can write down or, or actually I should say solve for F so we've already solved for F2 here this is F2 so let's now solve for F1 from this equation and F1 is going to equal uh, little mg plus big mg minus F2. And so now I can plug in my values. Uh, 1,500 times 9.8 and uh, oops, that's not right, plus 15,000 times 9.8 minus 
1.176 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons. And that's going to give me, it gives me uh, 4.41 times 10 to the power of 4 newtons. So I have solved for both F1 and F2 using these three equations here. Okay? Summation of the actually I didn't actually need the summation of the forces in the y because there uh, sorry in the x because there was no forces in the x direction. So I, essentially I solved two unknowns using just the summation of the y and the summation of the torques about a point which I chose. Okay? So uh, let's try another one. Okay, so this next problem is example 9-5 on page 211. And essentially, it's like, uh, it's like a cantilever. It's, uh, it's a, a beam, right? I mean, if I draw it again, it's, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's got a hinge here, and there's a beam that comes out hinged out on a wall. This is a wall. And there's the hinge here, which which this beam, horizontal beam, can rotate about. And so to prevent it from falling down, it's attached with a cable to a, a, a point on the wall that's higher up. And so the, the cable's attached like this. Now, there are three, there are two things touching this uh, beam. One of them is this pivot, which produces a force from the wall, like in that direction. And then there is the, the cable, which pulls a force of tension in this direction. And then, of course, there's gravity at the center of gravity, and gravity pulls down with mg. So essentially, we have three forces on this horizontal beam. And I have drawn them here. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, no, wait, I forgot another one. There's four. So in addition, there is a big mass that is, gosh, I'm really getting messy here. There is a mass, a big M, hanging uh, at the end. Okay. So that's this, this beam is held up by the rope or the cable, and there's a mass hanging on the end of it down. So now we have one, two, three, four forces on this horizontal beam. And the question says a uniform beam of 2.2 .2 meters long, so this distance here is 2.2 .2 meters, uh, has a mass of 25 kilos. So little m is 25 kilos. That's this mass. And it says, is mounted by a hinge on a wall, shown in the figure. The beam is held in a horizontal position by a wire that makes an angle of 30 degrees, uh, as shown. And so the 30 degrees is here. That is 30 degrees. And then it says, the beam supports a mass of big M, 280 kilos, that's this guy here. This M, this big M is 280 kilos. And um, it says, determine the components of the force F that the wall exerts on the beam at the hinge. And so uh, what we need to find, now in order to do that, we probably should use a different color here. So I'll bring up my color palette. Whoops. And let me choose, let's say, red. And I will draw the components of FW. So here we have FWX. And here I have FWY. OK? And also, um, correspondingly, I've also got two components for FT. 
I have the FTY and here I have FTX. Okay? So essentially I have broken up FT into the horizontal, horizontal and vertical and I've broken up FW into the horizontal and vertical components. Now I can go ahead and I'll change my color back and write down the equations uh, which I am going to employ. So the equations are some of the forces in the y has got to equal zero. Some of the forces in the x has got to equal zero. And the sum of the torques about some point must equal zero. Now the point you choose obviously is going to make a difference. Um, in this question we were also, you know, what I forgot to write down is what are we looking for? What are we trying to find? Now once again I know that this is 30 so we didn't put that in there. I put it up here but not in that one. But we're trying to find FW, uh, sorry, yeah, WX and FWY. Okay? Um, therefore, now, I'm going to try to make this easy. Obviously, in terms of the point at which I'm, I want to take my summation, I can decide that a bit later. I don't need to decide that right, right now because I'm going to do the summation in the two directions. But just to talk about it, if I pick this point, the center of gravity, that's not going to be a good choice for me because I have one, two, three, four, five, six forces here. And if I choose it here, I get rid of none of them. If I choose it here, I actually get rid of, well, see now, this is something that we're going to discuss in this problem. So do I only get rid of two or more? Well, I know I get rid of FWY and FWX because the distance to, let's say, let's call this point W. If I, if I choose that point as my point of rotation, then I get rid of FWY and FWX because they don't have a distance to point W, but do I get rid of anything else? That's what we're going to see. So before we go there, let's do this first. Okay? So let's do it here. Summation of the forces in the Y direction have got to equal zero. So we need to look at the diagram when we're writing this. So we'll, we'll say FWY, that's positive, minus little mg. Okay, so I'm just going left to right. That's x, that doesn't count. Now I'm not putting FW here because I've already broken FW into its two components. So I've got FWY minus mg. Then I've got plus FTY minus big mg and all that's got to equal zero. Okay? So vertical, 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 and vertical. Perfect. Okay. Well, we're done with that one. Remember, we know what little m and big m are. Okay? They're here. Let's now do summation of the forces in the x direction must equal zero, okay? So we kind of have to look at the diagram while we're doing this. Okay, so I made the image a little smaller so we can see everything in one shot. So here I'm going to say, okay, FWX is positive. MG doesn't count because it's vertical. And then the other MG doesn't count either. Then I'm going to say minus FTX equals zero. Now you can see just from this equation here, right? Because there's nothing else that's uh, that's that's horizontal. Just these two guys. You can see that now that they must equal one another. I can say FWX 
has got to equal now ftx. They're both pointing in opposite directions. So that, that's good, right? Because now I know that they, they have to cancel one another. So where do I go from here? I can't really solve the problem. I still have too many unknowns. So what I need to do now is I need to take the summation of the torques. So let's do the summation of the torques about point W equals zero. Now in order to, when I do that, we discussed earlier what forces are negated because the distance being zero. Let's discuss that now. So it's clear that FW and FW, FWY and FWX are going to be zero because there's no distance to point W. Well, actually there is another force which is zero as well, and that is FTX. Now you might say, okay, well, FTX is not zero distance from W, right? There's this whole distance of 2.2 meters but the problem with that is that there's no perpendicular force at this point here to the arm. So remember, torque is equal to force perpendicular times D. So in this case, the, the force is, you know, sometimes the distance could be zero. But in this case, like as in the case for FWY and FWX, this is all about this is all about point W, right? As the pivot point. These two force, these two red forces here on the left, they don't have a distance. Okay? So the torque is zero. But this force, FTX, has a distance. But the component of the force that is perpendicular to the arm, right? And where is the arm? It goes from point W to the end of the rod. There is no perpendicular component to that force. The way that I like to think of it is that I simply can draw a dotted line through. This is the line of my line of action rule. Okay, here it is. I'll write it down. Uh, this is something you learn in engineering. So line of action rule means that one can move a force to any location along its line of action. Now, how do you determine the line of action? It's very, very simple. So, let's say you have a force here, and the force is going like this. All you do is, you know, I can change the color here to make it more prominent. All you do is you draw a dotted line, so this is F, right? Draw a dotted line through F. And now you can move that force anywhere along that dotted line, and it's valid for the problem. So, you know, you can leave it here, or now in this case, right? we could move it to this location here. And you can see that by moving it here now, uh, the distance becomes zero. So this is kind of a cool, I don't know, trick or uh, rule or consequence. Now remember, you can't move it, you can't move it up and down. That's, that's not allowed but you can move it along its line of action. And like I said, the line of action is determined simply by putting your ruler on the force vector and drawing a dotted line extending on both sides of it. So, if we go back, 
you can see that now which three forces are negated. Okay, so let's write down our equation. Where, where was it? Here it is. Okay, are we still in red? No, okay. Uh, so let's go summation of the forces. Now, in order to do this, I think it's probably best if we kind of uh, zoom out a little bit. Yeah. And move this down so we can see everything. Okay. So we're going to have uh, that means now mg, this one, or maybe I should just draw it again because it's kind of small now, right? But um, all right, it's fine. Let's just let's just go with it, right? Or actually, you know what? Let's let's do it over here. There, that, we got lots of space here. It's hard for me to wrap my brain around the fact that my board, in this case, the screen is infinite in all directions. So I can I don't have to just simply scroll down. I can scroll in all directions. Okay, so let's go sum of the torques about point W equals what? So we've got these guys we can ignore. We've got mg. Now mg is going to produce a clockwise rotation. And so therefore, that's going to be negative little mg multiplied by the distance. Now if the whole thing is 2.2, I think we said that before. Here it is again then half of that distance is going to be 1.1. And then big MG is going to be uh, also negative, big MG, and that's going to be multiplied by 2.2. And then finally, so now this is gone, right? This is gone, and this is gone. The only one left is FTY, and that's going to be uh, a counterclockwise, so it's going to be plus FTY times, again, 2.2. So now all that is going to equal 0. So we can now solve for FTY. OK? So let's, let's do that now. So solving for FTY, we're going to get uh, positive mg 1.1 plus big mg 2.2 all divided by 2.2 right because this term you're gonna have to divide everything by that term so essentially I moved this guy and this guy over to the other side they both became positives and I divided by 2.2 so now I can plug my numbers in. Uh, little m, I believe, was 25. And big M was 280. Divided by 2.2. And that's going to give me, getting my calculator. Okay, I forgot to multiply by uh, g here in this. So uh, when I multiply by 9.8, I get 2,866.5 newtons for FTY. Okay? Now, remember that now that I have FTY, let's take a look at this more closely. I remember that that 30 degrees was there. So I can use that 30 degrees to my advantage. So if I draw those, that force, those force vectors at that corner again, right? So I've got um, this is FT, right? And then here are my components. I've got this one being FTX, and I've got this one being FTY. And I also know that this is 30 degrees. Now, let's, cha oops, let's change color back to black. How could, if I now know FTY, 
if I if I know this one and I know the angle, I can now use a little bit of trigonometry to help me find FTX. So remember Sokotoa tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So opposite in this case is FTY and adjacent in this case is FTX. Therefore, I can, oops, I can solve for FTX and FTX is going to be equal to uh, FTY divided by tan theta. In this case, theta is 30. So that's going to be 2,866.5 divided by tan 30. And that's going to give me 4,964.9 newtons for F, that's an F, TX. Okay? So I've got FTY and I've got FTX. Now, where can I take that? Well, if you remember this equation, we've got to kind of go back a little bit here, right here. We now know what FWX is because we know what FTX is. So I can say now FWX, therefore, is also equal to 4,964.9 newtons. This one, the FTX was going to the left, okay? This one is going to the right, because if you look at my diagram here, there they are, right? FWX is going to the right. Now the other uh, unknown, the last unknown, which I which I don't know, is F uh, W Y, but I can figure that one out because I can go back to this equation here and I can solve it. So if I go, if I solve this, solving for F W Y, I get. So F W Y is equal to little mg minus F T Y plus big MG. And now <clears throat> we can plug in our values because we know these numbers now. Uh, little m was 25. Now we also know FTW. Here it is. So 2866.5. And then plus, big M was 280. And so we'll use our calculator now to calculate this. So I got 122.5 newtons for FWY. And so now I have solved the problem. So I have FWY here. And I also, so that's, uh, that's actually point, 122.5. And so I can say here um, FWY was equal, is equal to uh, 122.5 newtons, right? From way right there. <coughs> and I also have the components of I have FTX and I have FTY, FTY was right there, 28665. So FTY was 2866.5. So
So here, it, here are um, FTX and FTY, and here is FWX and FWY. Now, if you wanted to calculate FT resultant or FW resultant, all you would have to do, let's say for FT, all you would have to do is add FT, X, and FTY to get FT. And the way you would add them, right, is with uh, Pythagoras. So you'd go the so you'd say FT is equal to the square root of FTX squared plus FTY squared. And vice versa, if you had if you wanted to find FW and you had FWX and FWY, you could say FW is equal to the square root of uh, FT, or sorry, WX squared plus FWY squared. So you have all those, and so it's trivial now just to use Pythagoras to get the resultants. And also, you know, um, we could also find out what the angle here would be, by the way, simply by um, going inverse tangent, right, of, we could say that theta here is equal to um, opposite over adjacent, so that'd be FWY divided by F. Uh, W X, and if you think about it, I mean, we could just do this now for fun, and um, I'll I'll do it on my calculator. So we're gonna get uh, four thousand nine hundred and sixty-four point nine divided by one twenty-two point five, and then I go inverse tangent. Um, wait, I did that wrong. FWY is 122.5, and then I divide that by FWX, which is 4964.9, and I get some number, and then I go uh, inverse tangent and I get uh, 1.4 degrees. So uh, this is the way to solve these, this problem or problems of this type. You're going to have three equations, summation of the forces in the y, summation of the forces in the x equaling 0, and summation of the torques about a point which you choose to be 0. OK, thanks.